So this is the fourth part of our uh, six part series for hypothesis testing. So we'll be covering now the t-test for one sample mean. So uh, if you will be having a recall, first part, we have the introductory part. So we have discussed there the concepts, the steps. And then we have the second part, that's for the z-test for one sample mean. Okay, and then third part, we have the z-test for two sample means. And then this is for part four, we will now be discussing the t-test for one sample mean. So part five, that's t-test for two sample means. And then the last part of this series of discussion will be on chi-square test. So let's start. Uh, this is the formula for t-test for one sample mean. So we have t is equals to sample mean less population mean multiplied by your n minus 1. Okay? That's your sample size minus 1. Divided by s stands for sample standard deviation. So it's somewhat the same with your, your z-test. The formula is alike with your formula for z-test. But the difference is that uh, for the value of n, you will subtract 1. And then instead of using population standard deviation, you will be using sample standard deviation. So in here, uh, just a recap, we will be using your uh, t-test if the probability distribution of the random variable is appropriately normal. So our assumption is that the distribution of our data is normal and then um, for the sample size uh, it's less than 30 so our sample size is small and our standard deviation comes from the sample not from the population okay so it comes from the sample so <clears throat> moving on uh, this is our critical values for t-test so still we'll be using your one-tailed and two-tailed test so if we'll be having one-tailed test this corresponds to the level of significance okay for one-tailed test and then for two-tailed test this corresponds to their level of significance okay and then this will represent your degrees of freedom so this is the continuation so this is up to 22 so we have here 22 up to 1000 but uh, from here you will be having different intervals okay so let's start with an illustrative example let's say we have a researcher who have found out that the average age of filipinos who got married is 23 years old so from from that particular uh, premise uh, there's a random sample of 29 married couples so this should be couples please take note of it na lang. and <clears throat> so we have 29 married couples were taken and found out to have an average age of 21 so their standard deviation is 1.23 so 1.23 comes from the sample okay it does not a state that the standard deviation of of the population and we will be using one percent level of significance <clears throat> for us to check whether these couples these 29 married couples were younger when they got married than the the average of 23 years old okay, of all of those uh, filipinos the population so we will assume that the probability distribution is normal. So for it to be fit with your t-test. So again, we will still follow the seven steps. So if you're not familiar with the seven steps, I do encourage you to go back to the previous videos. Uh, you watch um, the first video okay, for the discussion of the seven steps. So I assume that you're already familiar with the seven steps. So let's move on to the 
first step. So we will now formulate your null and alternative hypothesis. So again, one tip is for you to look for the main problem. So our problem is we will identify, we will determine whether these 29 married couples okay, were younger than they get when they uh, got married compared with the average of the Filipinos who got married. So we have our null hypothesis. The couples, these 29, were not younger when they got married. Okay, so this statement states objectivity or neutrality because of the word not. And then the alternative hypothesis states that the couples were younger than the 23 or the couples were younger than 23 when they got married. Okay, so what's the level of significance based from our um, data? We have 1% as our level of significance. So there we have 0 0.01 as our alpha level. Uh, we will now determine the appropriate test statistic. So here are our parameters. Here are our, are our criteria. The sample standard deviation is known. So it's stated here. The standard deviation is out of the 29 married couples, not the population. And then we also have sample size, which is small. So this is our sample size. We have 29. So that's less than 30. So we'll be using t-test and then uh, we have assumed that there's normal distribution of the probability. Plus this is a one sample mean. So we'll be using t-test for one sample mean and we'll be using one tail test because of our alternative hypothesis which is a directional hypothesis. Okay, so there. Moving on for our critical values or tabular value. So we have the given. Our level of significance is 0 0.01. But uh, technically we have 2.01s here. Okay. So what will be our criteria now? The type of test. So we will be using one tail test. So we will look for our tabular value on this column. Okay. This column. So you might be wondering why have we started with 22? Uh, it's actually because of your degree of freedom. So please take note that for t-test, you always need to compute for degree of freedom, your df. So how are we going to compute for it? It's n minus 1, in which n stands for the number okay, or the items found on your sample size. So in here, we have 29 couples. So we will be having 29 minus 1. So our degree of freedom is 28. So it's here. So 28, this row, and then 0 0.011 one tail test. So 0 0.011 one tail test, this column. So our um, tabular value is this one. Okay, the point of intersection. 28, okay, and 0 0.01 for one tail. Okay, so we have 2.467. And step five, we will now utilize our formula for t test for one tail test or for, for t test for one sample mean rather. So we have a sample mean. So what is our sample mean here? It's 21. That's the average age of our sample, which is 29. And then our population mean, so it refers to the average age of the Filipinos who got married, so that's 23, okay? Multiplied by your square root of n, so what's our n again? Number of items in our sample, that's 29. So 29 minus 1. And then our uh, standard deviation, so it's found here, it's 1.23. So let's place it here, 1.23. If you will simplify, so you subtract first 
okay and then you multiply with uh, 28 so that's 29 minus 1 that's 28 square root of 28 divided by 1.23 so you will get 8.641 so again uh, please be reminded that for your tabular value and your computed value you use the absolute values so I know negative multiplied by a number and divided by a number will yield to a negative number however again we will disregard the negative sign we will use the absolute value so we have positive 86041 so please take note of that and then we will now compare the computed and your tabular value so this is from step 5 we have 86041 and this is our tabular value from our uh, table of critical values for t-test that's 2.467 therefore what hypothesis are we going to accept now and what will we going to reject or what hypothesis are we going to reject rather so we will accept okay alternative hypothesis because our computed value is greater than tabular value okay therefore for our interpretation we'll be having our alternative hypothesis so the couples were younger than 23 when, when they got married so these 29 individuals or couples rather got married okay in which they are younger than 23 when they got married okay so moving on to the next illustrative example so we have here based on company records the average sugar content for a cup of brand j coffee was known to be four grams okay so four grams is actually our population mean okay and then a local researcher believes that there was above average sugar content on the 16 cups so 16 refers to our sample size okay of brand j coffee that he had tested so the mean sugar content of the sample was 7 grams so 7 grams refers to your sample mean okay and it has a standard deviation of 1.30 so this 1.30 is the standard deviation of the 16 cups not the population so technically that's your sample standard deviation and we have five percent level of significance uh, we will now test whether or not there is a significant difference between the average sugar content of the sample and the population okay so again our problem here is for us to establish whether there's a significant difference between the mean sugar content of the sample and the mean sugar content of the population. So again, we will follow the same seven steps. And for the null hypothesis and the alternative hypothesis, so we have for null, there is no significant difference between so please take note there should be between here between the average sugar content of the sample and the population so these two your seven grams and your four grams there's no significant difference and for our alternative hypothesis there is a significant difference between the average sugar content of the sample and the population so it contradicts our null hypothesis what's our alpha level it's 0 0.05 okay so five percent level of significance so what type of test are we going to use so our sample standard deviation is known so that's 1.30 our sample size is small so it's less than 30 so that's 16 and we have normal distribution okay so we also have one sample mean which is this one seven grams therefore we'll be using t-test for one sample mean and 
it's a non-directional hypothesis because of our alternative hypothesis. Okay, so therefore, we will be using your two-tailed test. So moving forward, here are our given alpha level of 5%. Okay, that's level of significance. So we have two here, 0 0.05, 0 0.05. So our qualifier now will be this one, the type of test. So it's two-tailed. So this is two-tailed and 0 0.05. Okay, so meaning our answer is found or our tabular value is found on this column okay so what's next what item are we going to highlight as our tabular value we will now compute for our degree of freedom so it's n minus 1 we have 16 that's our sample size so 16 minus 1 it's 15 so you look for 15 degree of freedom so there and then it should intersect the column of Okay, column of 0.5 for two tail. So this one, 0.5 two tail. So we have 2.131. There, our tabular value is 2.131. <clears throat> so we will now compute. Again, what's our sample mean? It's seven. There, seven grams. And then population mean it's four grams. Okay multiplied by 16 minus 1, so sample size minus 1, all over our standard deviation of 1.30. So there. So if we will simplify, we will arrive at 8.9377. Now, step 6, we will now compare computed value, tabular value. So our computed value is higher than tabular value, therefore, we will accept alternative hypothesis. Okay? And then we will reject our null hypothesis. So for our interpretation, we will now use our alternative hypothesis there. So our interpretation is there is a significant difference between the average sugar content of the sample and the population. So there. Okay. So that's for our one sample mean for t-test.